It is 2023, it's a brand new year. Let's talk about some side hustles and some ways that musicians and playback techs and production techs, anyone working on the road can make a little extra cash this year. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Behind the Space Bar. I know this is not a income producing podcast. This is not a podcast where we talk about investments, but this is a podcast for you if you're a playback tech musician, uh, an artist, anyone using tracks on stage. And I wanna start the year off because it's the beginning of the year, we typically talk about goals and vision and we have grand plans before we all go back to eating too much and eating poorly and getting too fat. Uh, while we're, we're, we're talking about goals, let's talk about trying to make more income and make more money. Now, I actually planned, uh, I've got my notes right here, I planned halfway through this to promote from studio to stage, but I'm not gonna do that because uh, I, my goal is not to sell you on anything. Uh, my goal is to sell you on ideas that you can make a little more money as a side hustle, as a musician, as a someone who's out gigging. Because here's the reality. If you only get paid when you show up and work, then you're limited. You only have two options to, to raise your income at that point. One, you take on more gigs or you raise your prices. And if you're lucky, if you're fortunate enough, it's possible that you can say, hey, you know, next time I come out to gig, uh, the price has gone up a little bit, you know, inflation, we haven't heard that word enough recently. Um, um, I'm gonna have to raise my prices, right? And hopefully people go for that and that's great. Or your option is, okay, I'm gonna take on more gigs. But if you only get paid when you show up, you can't be in multiple places at once, so there's always a hard limit, right? So what I wanna share in this episode uh, is a couple different ways, and it really boils down to two different approaches. Number one is to sell your time, and I'm gonna tell you what the other thing is in a moment. Uh, but let's walk through a couple different side hustles that you as a musician, as a playback tech, as an engineer, anyone on the road can use to apply to make a little extra money. Okay, number one, uh, we talked about the concept of selling your time. Let's talk about three ways you can sell your time. Number one is lessons. And this may sound like an obvious one, but this was something that I leaned into heavily when I first got out of college and I was making my money uh, as a worship leader. I was paid on staff at a church, but I needed some extra money. Uh, I was teaching guitar lessons. And this is something as a trained musician um, that I was used to doing. I, I taught some guitar lessons in college, but I actually got hooked up with a company at the time uh, in North Carolina where I was living uh, that went to people's houses and did guitar lessons. And that was great. Uh, I was able to go to people's house, teach lessons. Uh, and I think two days a week, that's just basically what I did. I drove around and did guitar lessons. And so you could do those in person. It's a really helpful thing. Uh, but even if you're out on the road, I know folks that teach Zoom lessons um, and depending on the instrument, that's a little more difficult than not. Uh, if you're a drummer, you probably have to be in a studio space with your drum kit. It's a little more difficult to do drum lessons without that. But uh, keys players, guitar players, um, uh, you know, vocalist even, uh, we could do lessons either remotely or in person. And again, that's a great way to make a little bit extra cash. Uh, number two, uh, this is something I see more and more people doing, and this applies whether you're a musician, an engineer, mix engineer, mastering engineer, or you can you know, add those skills to your, your, your toolkit uh, and your skill set, uh, is remote session work. The beauty of this is you can work from anywhere and you can kind of double up. Like you could be out on the road, uh, you know, playing with an artist and you could wake up before anyone else wakes up. You could uh, maybe not necessarily go to bed, you know, after everyone else goes to bed because you tend to stay up late and you're on a bus, but maybe wake up early and um, you could do remote work and you could, you know, really do this at any time of the day. Um, you could, again, work from anywhere. You could track drums, guitars for a project. That's, again, a little more of like, you gotta be at home in your studio necessarily to track drums. But um, I know guitar players that uh, walk around with an interface that they, uh, or a guitar uh, processor, something that's like IR based guitar stuff where they don't need a guitar amp and they can just track guitars for projects at any time. And it, what I love, you, you know this if you're listening to this podcast, but it used to be to record on a record, you've gotta to go to a physical location to record. And I know so many people that are session players that never go into a studio. They get sent a session, they get sent a, a two track recording with a click, uh, and then they add their guitar part and send that back to people. Um, there's some amazing tools to do that. And you can either do it uh, you know, in real time over Zoom with some like remote apps to transfer audio in and out of Pro Tools or Ableton, or you can do it asynchronously, which again is as long as you send me a file to record to and I have a chart or whatever, I can track guitar, I can track as many parts as you want and just send you the, the rendered exported guitar. Uh, I can mix those down, whatever. Um, so many possibilities. If you're a mix engineer, if you're front of house engineer, monitor engineer, a drummer, whatever your role is, but you have the ability to, 
to mix records, to program, you know, loop stuff, key stuff on records. Again, you can do that from anywhere at any time of day, do it asynchronously and send those files back and forth working with a, a producer, recording engineer. And again, it's a great way to do this at the same time you're out on the road with someone, work on multiple projects at once. It's a really great way to have some additional income. Number three, uh, and this is something maybe you've not considered, but being a remote music director. What I mean by that is if you build a relationship with an artist, or maybe there's an artist you're working with um, that's maybe a little smaller uh, of an artist, not in stature, but maybe in reach, and you're going out on the road with someone and you can't actually be on the road with them, you can take their songs, you know their songs, and you can work uh, through the process with them, work with their band, rehearse their band, get the, um, even just the process of organizing materials and going, okay, here's the, the stems from the session, let me get those to the playback tech, or let me build the playback session myself, uh, here's the charts, uh, let me help find a band, let me throw the band together. You can go and do a rehearsal for a day or two, get the band you know, working um, and, and everything you know, uh, you know, hunky-dory. And then that artist can go out on the road and yes, maybe you're not in person, you know, being a music director for them. Um, but what's really cool about that is again, you can provide your services remotely, do a lot of work on the front end to then equip that artist for success. And that's what a really good music director does. Like there's someone behind the scenes that takes that pressure off of the artist. Um, you can even do this for a band. Uh, it doesn't have to just be a, a artist, but you take the pressure and say, here's musicians that are gonna work really well. Here's your Ableton set. Here's charts for the musicians. I'm gonna help hire the musicians. I'm gonna help you work on transitions and build a great set, and then they can go out and be successful. Now, what's really nice about this as well too, again, we talked about kind of this first process is we can sell our time. What's great about this is you can book uh, a remote session work that you can do. You can book multiple of these at, at the same time, multiple projects you're working on. Uh, again, if they're asynchronous and they don't have to happen at a certain time, you could be doing a remote music director, uh, a session while you're also doing remote work. And then you can also, again, be doing lessons over Zoom while you're on the road, while you're playing with an artist. So I think the trick to making more money and making more income when you're selling your time is to stack right, to do things asynchronously, to, to stack these together, to be on the road, to have a consistent gig, and then add these extra things on top of that. Now, those are great, those are great ways that you can sell your skill, um, you're selling your time, but the downside to this approach and the downside to, downside to selling your time, yes, we can stack, but there's only 24 hours in the day. And so you're gonna hit a certain limit. Again, kind of like we talked about at the beginning, if you get paid when you gig, then your only approach is to charge more or to do more gigs. And hopefully you can maybe do a little bit more of that, but at some point you're gonna hit a limit. Yes, you could be on the road with an artist. Uh, you, could, you could be playing with them full time, doing remote session work, doing, uh, being a remote uh, music director, doing remote lessons, but at some point you're gonna run out of time. So the big shift, and this was a big shift for me, and I'm gonna tell you a story of, of uh, when everything changed for me, and it all has to do with Disney, which is so great for me because I'm a big Disney fan, is when you move from selling your time to selling your knowledge. So um, this would have been in uh, about 2008 is when I graduated college, and uh, I was doing guitar lessons. Again, I was leading worship at a church, and a couple big moments for me um, towards the end of my college career, I had a professor, I think I've shared this story before, where I went in and I taught Ableton Live and he said, hey, you should start a business where you, you start uh, teaching using Ableton Live, uh, you create some sample stuff or whatever, and you should sell that. And I never thought about that before and I started a business at that time in 2008 called Loops and Worship was geared towards worship leaders and I started doing that. And I wasn't really doing it very seriously, but the, for the first year, year and a half, I was doing that, teaching guitar lessons, working in a church. Well, I was um, an interim worship leader, which basically meant the worship leader from that church left, and they brought me in just kind of in the process as they were trying to find someone. And um, I remember sitting down with the, the pastor of that church one time, and he told me, he said, uh, one of the best things you can do is sell your knowledge. And that, that phrase has always stuck with me. And that, that again, really rang home. And so, um, I marinated on that for a while and I started to get a little more serious about loops and worship, but um, there was a big change for me where my brain was literally rewired, which then led me to start uh, from studio to stage many, many years later. My wife and I were on a trip and uh, this was before our kids were born. In fact, it was kind of like our, what do they call it, a baby moon or whatever, before, right before our kids were about to be born. 
And uh, we were traveling from Florida, where we were living at the time, back to North Carolina to see family. And we decided to stop at Disney World because uh, we weren't huge Disney fans then. We are now. I would live at Disney World if it was possible. And I'm saving up money to make that goal uh, a reality at one point in the future. But um, we said, let's go to Disney World. So we go to Disney World. And I had been working uh, up until the day we were literally there on releasing a collection of patches. This was a, a collection of patches for Ableton Live. And this would have been 2010, I believe is the year. It was a collection of keyboard presets, patches for Ableton Live. But the specific niche, the specific goal of that was for worship leaders. Again, that was kind of the market I was serving, the people I was serving. Um, and that did not exist at the time. Now, I mean, there are full companies dedicated to keyboard patches for um, for worship leaders, and that's all they do. That's the whole market they serve. But this was way back in the day. I was a pioneer, way before my time. But I created this collection of patches. I kind of teased it, and uh, that morning I hit go on the website and I launched it. And then we went to Disney World. And uh, I specifically remember it was a really rainy day. We got off a ride, and I remember pulling my phone up. And at that time, I processed payment through PayPal on this site called eJunkie. And I looked and I told my wife, I said whoa, I just made a thousand dollars. And what had happened, and I, I promise you in that moment, my brain was rewired because I was out riding rides at Disney World with my wife, having fun before the kids got there. And um, I had made a thousand dollars and I was making money, not when I was working. I wasn't selling my time. I was selling my knowledge. And that was a huge life change for me because I went from only get paid uh, when you show up to do a bunch of work, it's, it's not like it's, you know, people use the term passive income. There's nothing passive about it. It's just you do all the work on the front end and then you reap the results and the benefits later. And there's still support and that sort of stuff. But that whole idea of selling your knowledge just, just it changed my life. It rewired my brain to where I built a business on selling my knowledge. So I got three things for you, three ways really quickly that you as a musician, as a playback tech, as um, uh, anyone, that's getting paid for your time, that's getting paid when you show up, how you can shift to selling your knowledge and making some extra dough. Okay, here we go. We'll run through these really quickly. Number one, I mentioned this in my example, but patches, presets, templates, anything where you think of, um, uh, I'm a drummer. Uh, I, I use a, a drum pad, a Roland SPD. I'm gonna take the samples that I created, uh, as long as there's not stuff that you stole, it's stuff you actually created, and I'm gonna sell those samples and go, we'll dog it, you know, drummer that's renowned for this type of music, this type of thing. Now I can buy his actual drum samples to play along with. That would go really well. Keyboard player, uh, I play keys for uh, gospel style music. I play keys in funk style music. And if you're looking for keyboard presets that work for that, here they are. Um, I'm a guitar player. I play guitar for this type of music and I literally modeled every amp I have, every pedal I use, and you can use my exact rig uh, and you can purchase it for X. Start thinking that sort of way because the beauty of that is again, you create that content once, you're gonna have to do some work to market it and I'm gonna share a couple tips, I think five tips at the end here uh, of how to do that. But patches, presets, template, anything like that. You create it once, you sell multiple times over. Number two would be master classes, Zoom sessions. So this is kind of like, um, uh, you know, we said services. Uh, we said lessons could be in person or Zoom, but lessons are typically one on one. But a master class, a webinar, a Zoom session is one to many. And what that is, is you go, um, hey, I'm going to teach you uh, how to run tracks in Ableton Live. Um, but even go even more specific than that. I, run tracks in a gospel context. I run tracks in a jam band context. I run tracks in a, um, as a solo live looping artist. Here's how I use Ableton Live. And um, you could, as an artist, literally break down your entire set, do it once as a webinar, uh, do it you know, live for people and then continue to sell access or recordings to that or make it limited, do it quarterly, right? Do it once, make, you know, learn from it and then do it the next quarter and do it the next quarter. So you could do a Zoom masterclass. The third thing, which is what I do is sell courses. Now, if I was smart uh, or if I didn't have so much, so many thoughts and things I wanna say running around in my head, I would do it this way to where you say, here's my course on how to run tracks in Ableton Live. Now I can't do that. So I have like 60 courses on how to use Ableton Live on stage because there's so many things I wanna say. But for you, you could say, 
um, uh, here's my course on how I run tracks in a funk context, how I run tracks uh, in a gospel context, how I run tracks in a worship context, how I run tracks in a, uh, or how I do a, a use Ableton in a live looping context sort of thing. You could still be an artist that does that. You could still teach lessons. You could still consult and do, you know, remote gigs to help people set that up. But the thing that's really gonna to be a shift, again, shift from selling your time to selling your knowledge and make a course about it. Do the course once or do it as a masterclass and then eventually turn it into an on-demand course that you can sell access to uh, that people can continue to watch on demand whenever they're free. Okay, I wanna wrap up. I've got one, two, three, four, five, five things that I wanna share that are, are honestly things that I, I did that helped me build from studio to stage. Um, you could do whatever you wanna do. Some of these may apply to you, some of them may not. Um, and I can't promise if you do these, you're, you're going to be successful at that thing. But honestly, if you follow this process, uh, you're gonna find what is successful and you'll be able to do that. Okay, here we go. Uh, number one, start building an audience. How do you do that? Um, you create content that's compelling to people. You share your process. Um, you do that on Instagram, you do that on YouTube, you do that through blog posts, you do that through TikTok, create the talks as I call them, whatever you wanna do, whatever's gonna reach people, um, uh, you start building an audience. Number two, the best way to build an audience is give away content for free. If you're selling patches, presets, templates, create free versions of that, right? Um, something I waited way too late to do is to create free versions of things. And so uh, about a year and a half ago, I shifted to, I'm gonna make a free track template. I'm gonna make a, a free click track samples. I'm gonna make this, that, these different free lead things so that I could give those away for free. I could build an audience, get that audience to download those free things. Number three, capture emails. This is the most important thing. Um, right now, as I'm recording this, um, yeah, I'll share numbers. There's no reason why not. Right now, as I'm recording this, I'm at about 16,000 subscribers on YouTube. Instagram is about 2,000. Um, I'm gonna focus a lot on growing Instagram and stuff uh, and social um, in 2023. But the, the beauty of that is, yes, those numbers are great, but the most important numbers is I'm about 8,000 email subscribers. So that's people that have bought things from me, that's people that have downloaded free things, get a weekly email from me, and that email list is, is how I make money, right? Those 8,000 people, yes, I only have 16,000 people, it'd be great to get 100,000 YouTube subscribers, but with a list of 8,000 people, frankly, I started my business, I think, with an email list of 1,000, so that was, four years ago or whatever, almost five years ago. Um, so it doesn't have to be a big list, but build your audience, give away something for free. Number three, capture their emails. Number four, notice we haven't sold them anything yet. This is a mistake I made. I sold maybe a little too early, but number four is offer products. That could be patches, presets, templates, masterclasses, Zoom sessions, webinars, whatever it is, courses, offer products, and then number five, rinse and repeat. And what I should add in there is like a four and a half, five is offer products. And again, you follow this process, you're not gonna necessarily be successful, but here's where you will be successful. Is if you look at this as a great experiment, uh, I have offered products that I knew were gonna be a success that no one wanted. I have spent time at a company developing a product and putting years worth of effort into it with a team of multiple people to release it and not a single person cared about it. And you could go, oh, well, that's because of this, that's because of that. It just didn't resonate. So if you follow this process, start building an audience, give away free resources and content, which is gonna then influence the product you're releasing and selling it. Capture emails um, and then offer those products to people over email. You'll see if they like it. If they don't, listen to feedback. Maybe that's our next step. And then you just rinse and repeat. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna start to learn, oh, this is an audience I could serve. I could create this type of product. I thought it would be patches and presets, but what really people want is like, how do I connect this keyboard to all my other keyboards to control it? And you just listen and, and listen to what serves your audience best. So here's my hope for you after listening to this episode. Yes, there's some really great ways that you can sell your time, additional sources of revenue, but in 2023, look for ways that you can move from selling your time to selling your knowledge. And again, that, that process of selling your knowledge is building an audience, giving away content for free, capturing emails, offering products, listening for feedback, and then just repeating the process over and over. Um, let me know in the comments of this episode if you're watching on YouTube or listening in a place where you can leave comments. 
Um, let me know either additional ways you're making income as long as they're legal and moral and uh, you know, whatever. And again, we didn't talk about investing. We didn't talk about that because that's just not my shtick. But leave a comment to let me know what you're doing or which of these resonates with you. Again, maybe you're listening and going, you know, I've never thought about selling my knowledge. You know, I don't know if anyone wants to hear from me. Leave a comment, let me know what you're hoping to implement, what you're doing that I didn't list in this list of stuff. And let's make 2023 the best year yet. Not just from in income, but really with the desire to serve other people more than we serve ourselves. That's a, a, a kind of mantra I didn't plan on including this, but the motto for 2023 for me as a company, as an individual, service over self. My goal is to create products, podcasts, videos that serve you more than they serve me. Uh, and as Zig Ziglar often says, which I'm going to butcher this quote, but uh, you can have everything in life as long as you help other people achieve everything they want in life. Something like that. He said it much better, more eloquently than me. Thanks so much for listening to this podcast. Do me a favor. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, two things, actually three things you can do. Subscribe, uh, leave a rating and review as long as it's five star. If not, then uh, just don't worry about it. Skip that step. And number three, share this with someone that you think would like it. If you're watching on YouTube, do me a favor, hit subscribe, enable the bell icon. And again, do the same thing. Leave a comment. I, I, I really do enjoy that. And I do my best to respond to comments, particularly on these podcast episodes, and then share it with someone that you think would enjoy it. Uh, thanks for listening to Behind the Space Bar. I will see you next Monday. Uh, have an awesome week and let's go out there and make 2023 the best year yet. Take care, everybody. Bye.